The Mobile County Public School System presents Home Room with Nancy Pierce. Hello and welcome to Home Room. I'm Nancy Pierce, Public Relations Supervisor for the Mobile County Public School System. We are so excited about all the things that are happening this summer. We have a lot of building going on, but one school that is finished and ready to go is the Augusta Evans School. And oh, are we proud of it. I have here with me two wonderful gentlemen. Alan Baggett, who is a principal of Augusta Evans. Good morning. Good morning. And Tommy Sheffield, the executive manager of uh, facilities, land management, yada, yada, you know, lots of stuff. You wear a lot of hats, don't you? Yes, ma'am. Unfortunately, I do. <laughs> Good to have you here, too. It's always it's a always pleasure. It's always a pleasure to have, have you here. And Alan, I'm so glad you <clears throat> could be here. We've got the new school. It's ready to go. Come August 7th. The kids will be in there. Everybody will be in there. What do you think? You've been in it. What do you think? Oh, I think it's great. Uh, first and foremost, the, the, uh, the school is so much safer than the other school because, um, you know, because the other school had several exits and several buildings. This is all tied to one building, mm -hmm. very safe. Um, they have the um, tornado warning shelter. Um, and everybody is, in the school will be able to fit into that, correct? Right. Wow. So it's great. And it's real close to, to us, so I may run over there if uh, <laughs> I hear a signal going. Um, let's talk about Augusta Evans itself, the students that are there. Um, not your typical school, not your typical student. No. Uh, Evans is a uh, school of choice for uh, parents. Um, it's not an automatic choice. Mm -hmm. uh, the children have to meet a certain criteria. If uh, you move in the Mobile and you want your child to go to Evans, what you would do is enroll in your normal, your regular district school, and then uh, contact the resource uh, teacher that is assigned to that school, the special education resource teacher, and then and refer your son or daughter to her, and she in turn would make sure that the child is eligible as far as the IQ and adaptive behavior scores, and then uh, they would make the referral to Augusta Evans. We would send someone out to their school to observe the child to make sure that the child is, uh, you know, is uh, their education plan at the school has been implemented. And mm -hmm. if there's anything that we can do better than what they're doing at their district school, we will make that referral. Uh, how old are the children? Where, do, where does it start and how old can they be? Actually, we go from age 3 to 21. Okay. We have, uh, we have a preschool, an elementary school, a middle school, a high school, and then we have a post-high school job training program. And these students are challenged? Is that a good word to say? How, what, what kind of student? Do you get? <laughs> Our students to come to Evans have to have a uh, cognitive disability okay. with an IQ of 55 or below. Okay. And adaptive behavior scores to match that. So they're definitely special needs children. Right. This, you know, uh, all of us here have probably got an IQ anywhere between 115 to 85. And you take two standard deviations away from that 100 and you get to 70. Mm -hmm. That's about. 60, 70 percent of the total population, then you go one more standard deviation, which brings it down to 55, and um, then you get less than two and a half percent of the population. That's where our kids fall into. And I know parents love it. And Tommy, what do you think of the building? How long did it take to do? I, this was something that everybody wanted. Everybody's talked about it for so long, and now it's done. Yes, we had a contract time of about 14 months. Mm -hmm. uh, with some weather de delays over the contract period. Uh, it took us about 16 months to construct the building and uh, achieve our occupancy uh, certificate. Mm -hmm. So we've had the building in our possession since about February, the end of February 1st of March, we've wrapped the building up for construction. Uh, in the last few months, just been in that transition of taking it from construction to uh, Mr. Baggett's facility. What do you think? It's awesome. Uh, you know, there's there's been two or three projects in my career mm -hmm. that I've just always had a goal that I would like to have the opportunity to build. And one of them was Augusta Evans, <clears throat> uh, which finally came true. It's, mm -hmm. it's just been a personal goal of mine to be able to give back something to the children. And the other was actually Casa Diva, which is under construction. Uh, those two schools just had a little special place in my heart. But it, it's it's been a goal 
and uh, I think it's a company goal also mm -hmm. to be able to provide to these children. How many students did, did you have at the old or former Augusta Evans? 270, approximately 270. I think the uh, lowest that we ever had was about 248, and the highest we ever had was 200 and I think 83. Now uh, enrollment has shot up a little bit, and it's approaching 300. Do you have? A, do you ever have a waiting list? Yes, um, in the old school we have, but uh, I think that waiting list, the school, the new school is so much big. Mm -hmm. And um, bigger than the other school, just for instance, classrooms are anywhere from 200 to 300 uh, square feet bigger wow. than the regular class, the uh -huh. ones that we had over there. So I expect the enrollment to uh, continue to go up. What kind of comments do you get from your parents whose children go to Augusta Evans? Well, they love the school, the new school. A lot of them have driven by. Mm -hmm. uh, before but even the old school. They, oh, they love our school. They love our school. They love, um, it's a non-threatening environment. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, um, we have a lot of extracurricular activities that uh, children can participate in that they probably wouldn't participate in the regular school. For instance, like the uh, prom that we have. Uh, we have a lot of different things that they can do and parents really support the school. A lot of the children are in wheelchairs. Yes. And need a lot of care a lot of one-on-one -on -one that have, do they have, any of them have, what, what caregivers with them every day? Yes, our school, um, you know, I became principal 13 years ago. When mm -hmm. I got there, I really didn't know what to expect. And what I found was the most loving and caring staff that uh, I've ever been associated with. Uh, they do a great job with those children. And a, lo a lot of them still there? Yes, a lot of them are still there. So they have a real tie with the kids? Yes. It takes, it takes a while to get acclimated to the program, mm -hmm. but once they get acclimated to it, they just, they just love it and they never leave. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been there 13 years and I think I've had two people transfer. Wow, that's, so, that's great. Yeah, they stay there once they get there. It's a very loving environment and the children are just, you know, top of the line. They're just great. And I think you have to have a special person to be the principal and to be one of the teachers. I think it, it, it can't just be any teacher. You have to have something in your heart for special needs kids. Don't you right. agree? Right. Oh, I agree 100%. Well, Tommy, what is the coolest thing about the school, do you think? Oh, goodness, Nancy. There's so many different features in this building because it, it took a lot to put it together, working with Mr. Baggett mm -hmm. and Dr. This is Martin's not a cookie program. cutter school. No, it, it's we, we started from scratch. Mm -hmm. we, we took uh, a building that we thought we could modify and uh, achieve our budgets and square foot right. needs in order to actually make a larger building so Mr. Baggett's program could serve more children. Uh, but there's just so many neat things in this building. His, uh, his bead area is just, uh, you know, they had a huge bead program over there. Everybody knows about the Mardi Gras bead program. But to be able to design and, and uh, provide a better way for them, mm -hmm. uh, the playground, uh, just all the neat stuff in the school. We're going to talk more specifically about both of those in just a minute, but we need to take a break. So we'll be right back and we'll see you in just a minute. I'm Ashley Rich, Mobile County District Attorney. The failure to obey school bus safety laws will cost you. It can cost you up to a $3,000 fine and the loss of your driving privileges. But more than that, it could cost the life of a child. That's why the Mobile County Public School System is urging you to stop and obey all bus traffic laws. Hi, I'm Pat Mitchell, Director of Transportation for the Mobile County Public School System. We're asking you to obey all bus safety laws. It could save a life. Remember, stop ahead when you see red. Our future depends on it. For me, it started back in 1942 when my family moved to Mobile and I began my uh, high school career at Murphy High School. Today, it's so important to be able to ingrain in yourself what are you gonna do in future life, and you need to be prepared. And so subsequently, everything at Murphy was very important in my life, and so it, it was instrumental in preparing me for future life and future profession that I wanted to be in. I've come up with the family emergency plan. What is it? It's difficult to talk about, so I'm not telling you. 
I'm so glad I won't have to remember anything. And me too. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. Welcome back to Homeroom. It is such a pleasure to have Augusta Evans Principal Alan Baggett with us this morning and also Tommy Sheffield, our Executive Manager of Facilities and a number of other things. And we do have a new Augusta Evans School. The old Augusta Evans, I, or the former Augusta Evans School, is on Florida Street. Yes. And um, the new one is where Hillsdale Middle School used to be, which is close to us out here. Um, Tommy, did you tear, you tore the Hillsdale School down? Correct? Yes, that is correct. The old uh, Hillsdale facility, uh, based on the enrollment, was a very large older mm -hmm. facility in, in need of a lot of repairs. Mm -hmm. So the concept was to demo that building on that campus, uh, clean the campus up in order to make way for the new Augusta Evans project. What, what we were looking for is a place to build the school that we didn't disrupt Mr. Baggett's program and displace his children while we built the new school. Mm -hmm. So it had a lot to do with us tearing the old school down in order to accommodate a, a new home for Gus Evans. That's really great because a lot of times <coughs> we, when we've done new schools, when we have added things, um, the kids have to be in portables or you do part of it at one time. Well, the kids just have to go somewhere either in classes that might be empty or in the portables and so what a great way for you to do this is the kids were still at the other Augusta Evans on Florida Street while you built them the new one so I, I love that the fact that you were able to do that in um, what about the parents have they driven have they gone inside have has anybody gone inside other than you Alan um, some, new parents, one? some parents have been there and but we're waiting for um, the end of July, the 1st of August, and we will put out a school messenger for all the parents and set mm -hmm. up a day for the parents to come with their children to get the both of them acclimated to the building. Yeah. Where the, you know, where the buses are gonna be dropped off, where right. the children are gonna be dropped off, different things like that, but. Um, what kind of reactions are you expecting? Oh, I know it's gonna be ooh and ah, you know. <laughs> uh, the school is just fantastic, beautiful. I know when, when I visited, which was probably a month ago, I did the same thing. Ooh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, look at that. And I think I saw in the paper where you were taking apart your, is it the sensory room? And I know that's not the right word. For, is it sensory room? Yes. So you can move that. Explain what that room is, because I think it is really cool. The sensory room was a, um, it's a school for the most um, severe children. Mm -hmm. um, children that have really uh, very little mobility very little um, uh, cognitive, you know, but they can go and they can get excited. It's, uh, there's lights, texture, sounds, uh, all involved in the sensory room. So that is definitely going to be moved. The things within it are going to be at the new school. Yes. What about um, the playground? Because I know the playground is unbelievable. And now we're seeing these pictures of the outside. Oh, look at that, it is spectacular. It is so exciting to see it. I, I just, I can't believe how excited everybody's gonna be. What about the, the, the playground? I know we have talked about the playground and um, not sure we have any pictures of it, but well, let's look at some, oh, well, okay. Um, tell us about the playground. And Tommy, mm -hmm. you can join in too. Well, the playground came about, uh, Deborah Walks was my PTO president at the time and her and I were trying to raise money for a new school and Dr. Nichols at that time uh, was telling us that there was very little surplus money uh, mm -hmm. that was available to us. And so uh, Dr. Walks's uh, idea was to form a 501c3 nonprofit organization. And there we're seeing some, to some raise of money, the pictures. Mm -hmm. To raise money for the playground. So, but that took seven months. And a week before the school board uh, approved the uh, building of the new school, right. we have our, we got a notification from the IRS that the 501c3 was granted. Right. So we had a nonprofit organization sitting on the side, and they're the ones, instead of the goal being building the new school, the goal turned out to be building a new playground. And look at that. And we it raised is a. Phenomenal. Yeah, the playground uh, cost $262,000. Wow. And what, it what's came. What's special about it? I'm sorry, we'll get into that. I, I want to talk about the pictures. What is so different about the playground? Because it is not your typical 
school playground? No. Well, you start with the surface area. Mm -hmm. um, the surface area has a five foot free fall uh, safety feature in it. When you step on the playground, you can actually, it's cushioned, you can actually sink about an inch into the ground to, so when children fall, they won't get seriously hurt. Oh my gosh. The, um, the main feature there also is wheelchair ex accessible. Mm -hmm. You actually can have two wheelchairs going two different directions and still be able to fit on all the ramps. There's a lot of interactive features uh, that are involved. We, uh, the NEOS is an electronic game that kids can compete in. Oh, you know, so on the playground. Oh, the kids are going to love that playground. Our problem is going to be getting them off. <laughs> Well, but that's true no matter what, what school it is. <laughs> yeah. At least I remember that when I was a kid. That's true. But uh, that is phenomenal. And now, Ken Meganson, who used to be on the board, he was very instrumental in this, wasn't he? Yes, Ken sits on the nonprofit board, the mm -hmm. Gus Evans Nonprofit uh, Foundation, and uh, he has been very crucial in getting this done. He's um, spent a lot of time, a lot of effort, mm -hmm. a lot of, um, you know, he's just been. Uh, committed to the project and he's done such a really good job. How do you raise $260,000? Well, I've done a lot of speaking uh, engagements. Uh, I've eaten barbecue all over Mobile. Uh, you name it, I've spoke to bike rallies. Um, but the biggest donor was the, uh, the Rotary Club of Mobile. And this was a centennial project and they donated uh, $150,000 wow. to our project. So the rest was 110000 you all had to raise, but raise. you did it. It's unbelievable, Tommy. Fabulous. Oh, it was. It, it was uh, like, like Mr. Baggett said, the Rotary Club, and, and then Mr. Magnuson's involvement. Of course, all the parents, all of them. You know, it was, it was collective effort. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a one of a kind in Mobile mm -hmm. County that I'm aware of. Also, not only did we build a one of a kind school, we have, uh, I think, one of the finest ADA accessible playgrounds in Mobile County. And I know you you and several people looked at a lot of different playgrounds before you decided on that one. What made that playground the one, the one that you wanted to pick? Was there something special? Well, I just got so, um, you know, it was pretty much, pretty much left up to me to do the research behind the playground. Mm -hmm. And I went through so much, uh, so many materials and so many interviews and so many people pitching their projects. But Southern Playground did a really good job, and they had a really nice history in Mobile County and throughout Alabama mm -hmm. and the Southeast. So that was the company that we ended, with, uh, ended up with. But they did a great job. I have a feeling you're going to have a lot of visitors <clears throat> just looking at, the, you know, looking at the school and looking at the playground. Because uh, like you said, new school, new playground, incredible. Uh, we do have what we call cookie cutter schools where you build one and then you build another one that, that uh, is pretty much the same, making some improvements every year it seems every time you build but um, but this is one of a kind this is an incredible school and it, it, sometimes I kind of have to pinch myself and think it really happened because I know I've been here 11 years and I and I've been waiting for it I know you've been waiting for it Tommy you've been waiting for it and now it's here it's it's incredible are have the teachers gone in yes are they moving their stuff yet, or is that yes. not happening? Uh, we should be finalizing our final move. Uh, it may be um, maybe the middle of this week before uh, oh everything's boy. over there. Oh, but yes. I've been there for about a week, and um, it's steady uh, moving. And here it is, summertime, teachers are off, but no. And it's, not, it's probably not so much that they need to get it done. They just I have to be so excited about seeing where they're going to be, where their classroom's going to be. What is, oh, it, it amazes me. Um, let's talk about the interior. Uh, bright colors. Very bright colors. And who does the picking of those? Who, whose choice is that? Is that the builder, contractor? It, it's a collective. Uh -huh. uh, we actually try to get with the school. Mm -hmm. They come up with a, uh, their school colors to give the building an interior theme using the, the local school colors. And we take it from there, implementing some of these colors into our floor tile patterns and our wall colors. Right. Uh, we also have an interior direct decorator, excuse me, that goes through. And, and you know, there's there's a lot of information in, in colors mm -hmm. and how it stimulates and, mm -hmm. and, and activates the kids and environment 
uh, as a package. So all that's looked into, and I think it's, I think it looks great. I think it does too. We need to take one more break, so sit tight, and we will be right back. I went to Murphy High School. In fact, to this day, my blood bleeds blue and gold. <laughs> to this day, some of my best friends are the high school football buddies that I had. Uh, we really had a wide array of classes available to us. All of my future relates back to the foundations that were given to me by the wonderful teachers and principals that I had uh, when I was a kid. I saw Mr. Tillman's class. Just that quick little five minutes I had with him made me think that I really wanted to uh, do small engines. I just love tinkering with them. Just a uh, gearhead. Graduating from the Career Tech Center has allowed me to better myself, make more money, be more informed about uh, the trade that I'm going to be in. I just felt like doing a trade is just better than working in an office or something. I have to be outside working with my hand or something. MCPSS Career Tech. Start your future today. When you throw away money on wasted electricity, you're throwing away everything you could have bought with it. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. Welcome back. We are talking about one of our brand new schools that will open in August when our kids come back. It is the Augusta Evans School, and we are very excited about it. It's the same location where Hillsdale Middle School used to be. Um, out here close to our central office and I have two very special people with me uh, Alan Baggett who is a principal of Augusta Evans and Tommy Sheffield the executive manager of facilities and we've been talking about how wonderful the school is how excited everybody is it's been a long time coming and finally it's here so let's talk about the interior you've talked about that there is a, a tornado shelter a safe room where all the kids all the teachers could go if we have a tornado. You know, we never used to think of that, a tornado shelter in Mobile, Alabama, <laughs> but now you need to. So that's really cool. That, I, I love that aspect. And um, what else is there that uh, you wanna talk about? Oh, and we have a, look at that sign, tornado shelter. Yes, you know, the tornado shelter, as you said, Nancy, uh -huh living down here in the south we're always worried about hurricanes right. we we don't think a lot about tornadoes mm -hmm. uh, about three or four years ago the alabama building commission came out with a building code that all new public facilities would have to have a safe space which is a tornado shelter to withstand uh, i think a uh, f3 uh, tornado and the whole time we're thinking, wow, you know, really, we're going to design in a, a tornado shelter in Mobile, <laughs> Right, Alabama. why would we do that? We don't and, have tornadoes. And, that's right, and we started doing that, and we got through Taylor White was our first school mm -hmm. with the shelter, a UL-tested uh, tornado shelter to withstand 200 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. uh, the following Christmas, <laughs> we had a tornado at Murphy High School. We sure did. Uh, after seeing the destruction of the campus, it's like, wow. Mm -hmm. That's why we build tornado shelters exactly. in Mobile now. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, it's a huge feature to the school. It's a mm -hmm. very safe environment. What about um, do, uh, what about labs? A lot of the schools yes. have different labs. They do. Uh, we, we have a standard computer lab in okay. there that will uh, house uh, about 30 children. Uh, of course, we make the accommodations in the infrastructure uh, to be able to feed each classroom in the building with its own fiber optics, its own uh, switch in each classroom. Mm -hmm. So you really have unlimited amount of access per classroom. Right. Uh, we do build a computer lab for mm -hmm. strictly instructional environment, but every classroom in the facility has uh, access to technology in oh, the classroom. Oh, that's great. With a smart board mm -hmm. uh, and with the uh, fiber optic and wireless connectivity in each classroom. Uh, that's fabulous. Do, do the kids like that? What do they think? You know, when I first, uh, three years ago, when we were putting our technology mm -hmm. plan together, um, I was first, you know, concerned about whether or not it was going to make the impact that it did. But that went away, and about two weeks after we put all these smart boards in at Augusta Evans, the uh, 
site on North Florida Street, and they it's just made a tremendous impact. The children um, do a great job, interactive. You know, mm -hmm. it's very interactive. Mm -hmm. Kids love it. It's teachers that absolutely love it. It's you know, all our schools have smart boards, and they all seem to do really well. You know, the kids love them. But, you know, this is so cool that your students can use them, can utilize them. And uh, it, might make, it must make them feel good and oh. their parents feel good. It does. That's great. Okay, I know what. Now, we had talked about the bead program where you turn in your beads for, you turn in your beads for donuts at Krispy Kreme, and then Augusta Evans students get the beads and sort them. And now what, what is that? And then they sell them back to organizations and individuals. What does that money go for? Well, that money, some of the money goes, about 30% uh, of that goes to supporting our uh, token economy, a school-wide token economy. What does the that mean? The children that, the B program is part of our job training program. Which is wonderful. Right, and then we have our higher school and intermediate levels that participate in the token economy. And the um, a student can earn points for completing, say, their math work, mm -hmm. their English, their writing, their reading. They earn a certain amount of points, and then three days of the week, they can take those points and turn it into cash and purchase things. Uh, they can purchase gift certificates. They can purchase CDs. They can purchase um, anything within reason. You know, they uh, they can go home, cut a picture out of a uh, catalog or newspaper, and bring it to back to the teacher, and the teacher will assess what how, how much that's mm -hmm, going to cost mm -hmm. and how many points that child has to earn. There's also a little token economy, not a um, layaway plan tied to it too for the oh more expensive gosh. programs. So they really are. I mean, it's great for for uh, when, uh, skills that they're learning are great for when they leave Augusta. Right. Evans. And then there's there's always the um, greenhouse. Oh my gosh, yep. fabulous. What's the facility like at the new school? The, green, the, the two greenhouses are fantastic and um, they're a part, again, part of our job training program and we're opening it up to our uh, senior high population too, so wow. it ought to be great. So you'll have plant sales? We're going to. Right now they're both empty, but uh -huh. uh, we, uh, when school starts we'll have a plan in place to get it all going. I remember when I first started here, uh, people would tell me about your greenhouse and your plant sales and that they were the best in town. And they were phenomenal. And I know the people that worked there worked really hard, but they earned a lot of money. And the kids that took part in it learned these life skills and business skills that they can take when they leave your school. Right. It's got to be tough, and we're almost out of time, but it has to be tough for the kids to leave, especially if they've been there the whole time. Right. That's why it's so important for us to do as much as we possibly can to get them employed when they leave. Yeah. Uh, just part-time employment. Right. You know, it's just the, you know, the things that we take for granted, bumping into one another and talking to people, uh, a lot of these children will go home and never leave the house. Right. So we try our best to get them out there in the uh, public so they can have a, you know, a good life. Sure. That's amazing. How many, we've got about 15 seconds, how many kids this year, uh, do any of them have jobs right now that graduated? Yes, we actually, the school system just changed uh, their rules as far as hiring uh, children with special needs. Mm -hmm. And we've uh, been uh, able to uh, place a couple That's students. That's great. Well, we are out of time. I really appreciate you coming. Can't wait to see the building with the students in it and the teachers. So we'll be by, and thank you again for stopping by. You're welcome. Thank you. And thank you for listening and for watching.